Hello folks, welcome to today's demonstration video of my eShop project. In today's video, I am going to explain about the program inside of the watch list. So without further ado, let's get into this. As you can see, I am on the watch list page of our eShop. I already explained about the UI design inside of this page in the previous video in depth. So as I mentioned previously, this video is only going to be about the program inside of this page. There are some already added products in our watch list as you can see. This place is showing product image, then this place is showing product title, then this place is showing product color, then this place is showing product condition. Then here it is showing price of a unit, then here it is showing available quantity, then here it is showing name of the seller. Then this is the buy now button as you can see. When clicking on it, it takes us to the single product view of this product. Then this is obviously a add to cart button. When clicking on it, it adds this product to the shopping cart. After adding product to the shopping cart, we are getting an alert like this. Then finally, this is a remove from watch list button. By clicking on it, we can remove this product from the watch list. As you can see, after clicking on it, that product was suddenly disappeared from the watch list. Alright, that's all about it. Let's get into the code inside of things. So now I'm going to VS Code as you can see. I'm currently viewing the watchlist.php file. To keep our page running in the state, it should be I'm linking some other files inside of it. First inside these head tags, I'm linking bootstrap.css, then bootstrapicons.css, then now on style.css file. Then by the bottom of these body tags, I'm linking bootstrap.bundle.js file, then now on script.js file. These session calls inside of this PHP script are checking out whether a user is signed in or not. If they weren't signed in, this page is echoing a response as please sign into your account first. Then inside of this PHP script, I am requiring connection.php file to establish the connection with our database. If a user was signed in, these codes are keeping that user's email like this. This search query is searching watchlist relation for the database entries made with that user's email address. If there weren't any entries in that relation with that user's email address, this page is showing that user this empty view. That empty view is showing users a text as you haven't added any products to the watchlist yet. Then it is giving a button as star shopping too. It is redirecting users back to the home page of our eShop. But if there were entries with that user's email address, they are getting this view. These codes are creating the view of individual products. First inside of this PHP script, we are creating an array of images like this. Then the search query is searching our database for the product images. Then this image field is setting product images to the products. We are setting source of the images like this. Then this search query here is searching our database for the product details. These codes inside of this PHP script are setting product title like this. Then this search query here is searching our database for the colors of products. Then these codes inside of this PHP script are setting color like this. Then this search query here is searching our database for conditions of products. Then these codes inside of this PHP script are setting conditions like this. Then these codes inside of this PHP script are setting price of a unit like this. Then these codes inside of this PHP script are setting number of available product items aka available quantity. Then these codes inside of this PHP script are setting seller's first name then the last name. When clicking on buy now button of a product it takes users to the single product view of it. That process is linked to this button like this. These are the codes of add to cart button. I'm gonna explain about this code in JS function in depth in upcoming video so I'm not gonna do it in this video. Then finally these are the codes of remove from watchlist button. I'm gonna explain in depth about this call in JS function in the next video of this series. So because there's a dedicated video for that I'm not gonna do it in this video. Let's inspect the process of adding products to the watchlist. So now I'm going to the home page of our eShop. 
now I'm gonna add this product to our watchlist. As you can see this heart icon is still black. That means this product is not currently in our watchlist. I want to change that so now I'm gonna click on this. As you can see now the color of heart icon was changed to red. It means this product is now on our watchlist. Let's see whether if it is true or not. To confirm that let's go to our watchlist again. Alright now we can see our product on the watchlist here like this. Okay now we are certain that add-in process is working perfectly. Let's get into coding side of things again. So now I am going to VS Code again. As you can see now I am weaving home.php file. This search query is searching our watchlist relation using product IDs and signed in user's email address to find products that were added to the watchlist by that user. If there were any entries in the watchlist relation, these codes are showing add to watchlist buttons of those products in red just for that specific user. If there weren't any entries in the relation, these codes will show that button in black as usual. In both of those situations, when clicking on that button, we are calling a JS function like this. When we are calling that JS function, we are also passing the product ID with it. Alright, let's get into our script.js file. Alright, you can see our add to watch this JS function here like this. We are also grabbing the passed ID from here like this. Then I created a new XML HTTP request to request from add to watch this process.php side. Then this on ready state changes here to figure out the current state of our request. If the ready state of the request is 4 and add to watchlist process.php side is giving a response text as removed, these codes are showing heart icon of the button in black. Then if the response text was equal to added, these codes are showing that icon in red. After changing the color of that icon in both of those situations, these codes are reloading the page. From here we are sending our request to add to watchlist process.php side using the get method like this. We are sending the product id combined with it too. Alright, let's see our add to watchlist process.php file. From top of this page I am starting the session like this. Then from here I am requiring connection.php file to establish the connection with our database. Then these codes are checking out whether a user is signed in or not. If a user wasn't signed in, this is giving a response as please sign in first. Then these codes are checking out whether a product ID is coming or not. If a product ID wasn't coming somehow using the get method, these codes are giving a response as something went wrong. If a product ID was coming, these codes are keeping that like this. If a user was signed in, these codes are keeping that user's email address like this. This search query is searching our watchlist relation using product IDs and signed in user's email address to find products that were added to the watchlist by that user. If there was send entry in the relation, these codes are deleting that. After that, it is echoing a response as removed. If there wasn't an entry in the relation, this query is creating an entry inside the relation. After that, it is echoing a response as added. So folks, that's all I have to explain in this video. Stay tuned for the next one. See ya.